대한민국 서울시에서 라이브 공연으로 드디어 그가 여러분을 만나러 왔습니다. 신사 숙녀 여러분, 짐 가스겐. 땡큐, 땡큐, 감사합니다. 땡큐, so much. It is, thank you. It is so great to be here in Seoul, in Korea, back where I grew up. It is so good to see familiar faces. I, uh, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but I am not Korean. I'm uh, not even half Asian. I, uh, I know I'm not Asian because uh, when I go in restaurants, they just bring me a fork. I don't even have to ask for it. They're like, that guy, fork. <laughs> I've been on tour through Asia for two weeks. I went to nine cities and six countries. It's been amazing. And, uh, and I've loved every moment of it, even walking around Tiananmen Square and seeing all the Chinese look at me like I was a circus animal. <laughs> What is that? I too am human. Really? Kind of, kind of. I've loved Asia. I wish I was Asian, but I can't get in that kind of shape. I mean, look at me. I don't know how you Asians do it. It doesn't make sense. What if we only ate rice and never gained weight? Let's do that. That probably sounds racist, because, uh, well, looking like this, everything sounds racist. You know, it comes with the uh, skin complexion. I've loved Asia. I, uh, it's been amazing. And I've made a point of, of being adventurous and kind of going away from some of the, not, you know, seeing the tourist spots, but also going other places. Like, you know, there's been many moments when I've been exploring around Asia and I've been like the only white person I would see for like an hour. And then I'd stumble upon and I'd see a white guy and I'd be like, hey. <laughs> Sometimes, like, if I saw a white guy, I'd kind of, like, just to startle them, I'd be like, foreigner, <laughs> leave my country. <laughs> It's cute. <laughs> It's a cute thing, but I love it. I love it. It's just so fun. Like, in Taiwan, I had a friend who I went to college with. She was born in Taiwan, so she met me there. And we went on a tour, and we went, we had a tour guide who was from Taiwan, and we went outside of Taipei to like an area that was a former gold mine that was just where, where Taiwanese people would go. And they were, and I was walking along with my friend and, and the tour guide, I was following the two Asian women. And eventually, I was following two other Asian women. <laughs> I wish I could say it only happened once, but it happened a couple times, and I couldn't really say anything. I couldn't be, like, my friend was like, why do we keep losing you? I couldn't be like, because you look like everyone here. I had to be like, you know, I, I saw, you know, like, there's all these kiosks with uh, exactly the same crap. Uh, well, I wanted to go into one and look at their crap. I've loved it, but I love, I've been in Korea for a day, so I've got to figure it out. <laughs> uh, got it summed up. I've been eating, you guys love to eat, which is like, uh, we on a tour yesterday, and every, everything we went to and we were eating, the tour guy would be like, this is just a snack. <laughs> this, see, we just, Koreans, we just eat this as a snack. And I'm like, I like this country. <laughs> Because it was like maybe 30 places. This is just a snack. I'm like, is this how this guy gets fed? Just on these tours? Had so much kimchi. I love kimchi. I have a complex relationship with kimchi. At night, I'm like, yay, kimchi. In the morning, I'm like, boo, kimchi. I don't like kimchi anymore. 
Last night I had a uh, Korean barbecue, or as you guys call it, barbecue. Uh, different from uh, American barbecue, uh, less racism. Uh, but uh, the Korean barbecue, it's also Southern Korean barbecue, very similar to America's Southern barbecue. Probably not a lot of barbecue in North Korea. Uh, no meat or fire, you know? Um, I can say that joke because I'm North Korean. <laughs> but I love it. I always try and sample the local food when I visit all these different countries. In Taiwan, I had uh, a tea egg, which is uh, essentially a hard-boiled egg that's cooked in tea. And now that, that might sound gross, but it was. <laughs> It, it was very gross, but it was the best alternative. I was with my friend. She was like, you can either have the tea egg or you can have a thousand year old egg. And I was like, well, I can think of like a thousand reasons not to have the thousand year egg. So I started eating the tea egg a bit in and the yolk was green and it wasn't St. Patrick's Day or anything. And I was like, uh, is this... This is, you know, because, you know, like some food when it turns green, I don't know, that's concerning. <laughs> that's when you usually stop. I looked around, everyone was continuing to eat their tea egg. And I was like, you know, at Taiwan, they got good medical here. <laughs> so I ate it. But I love Taiwan. Very complex. Every Asian country, obviously very complex and unique. But like there's, there's mysteries in all of them, right? You know, like in Taiwan, you know, they are Chinese people. But they, uh, it's, the country is called the Republic of China, but it's not China. <laughs> and they get angry there. This isn't China. We're Taiwan, and we're Chinese. <laughs> and you're like, okay, okay. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Taiwan, I had a uh, soup dumpling for the first time. Now, when I heard that, they're like, we're going to get soup dumpling. And I'm like, great. All right. And I thought there was like soup with dumplings in it. Nope. <laughs> it's a dumpling with soup in it. Because, you know, who, I think we were all were tired with eating soup a normal way. <laughs> right? You know, it's like, well, how exhausting was that? <laughs> Soup dumpling, which I don't know who that's for. You know, it's like, do you like dumplings and also burning your mouth? Because then you're going to love our soup dumpling. Who is? I don't even, I, I don't even think that was the initial idea. Like that was, I think the person was given an, a different assignment. And like the boss came back and he was like, I did it. I put all the soup in the dumplings. Your dad didn't own this company. Uh, that's not what I asked for. Okay, then you're not gonna like the cottage cheese and the water balloon either. No, I don't think so. Tried somebody. Probably the most disgusting food item I've tried in Asia is uh, the stinky tofu, which is. Um, uh, you know, sure, you know, it's not for everyone. It's like you have to really like tofu that, and enjoy the smell of a public restroom. <laughs> First of all, calling it stinky tofu is like probably the biggest undersell I've ever seen. That's not stinky. That is like, that, it's not, stinky doesn't make you gag. <laughs> it was... I don't know. And they're like, it's like fried tofu. I'm like, fried in what? Diarrhea? I don't... Jim, that's disgusting. That is truly disgusting. But it's fun seeing the different cultures, the different reactions to things, you know. Did a show in Japan. I know Koreans. You guys are good friends with Japan. Um, Japan... It's interesting because they're, they're very polite and they're very organized and, and efficient. But I feel like some of the, a lot of that Japanese culture is just constructed 
so that they don't have to really interact with white people. <laughs> like so much of their culture, it's like even like paying with a credit card, they're like, you know, put it in the, put it in the tray. I, I don't want to accidentally touch your white skin. <laughs> you know what, just put it down there, you ape or whatever you are. You know, getting a taxi in Japan, you know, we'll open the door, all right? You don't have to put your grimy barbarian hand on my car. Just, I'll open it, get in, try not to breathe, all right? Even the taxi drivers in Tokyo are wearing gloves. They're like, you never know when a Westerner is gonna reach over and wanna shake hands. You gotta be careful. Japanese, very efficient. Sometimes that efficiency in Japan goes away. Like, it goes too far, you know, like, like the, the Japanese, not a lot of soup variety in Japan. The soup variety, you can either have miso soup or no soup. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> you, you want some miso soup? Do you have any other soup? Uh, we got a larger bowl of miso soup. <laughs> that is just a commitment to miso soup. I love how it's delivered to the table. It's like covered with another bowl, like, you know. And it's like it's a big reveal, like you're not gonna believe what's in, <laughs> what soup this is. It's, it's the only soup we have, me, miso soup. <laughs> miso, curious why there's only one soup, you know? There's some unifying things that I've observed about all Asian countries I've been to. Uh, you know, like for instance, uh, any item is appropriate for breakfast in Asia. It's like, good morning. You know what's for breakfast? Anything you ate last night. <laughs> you know? It's all on the table. What Rice, pancakes, popcorn, lollipops, whatever you want. <laughs> all for breakfast. <laughs> but that's, you know, it's fascinating. I'm still getting used to uh, beans or a dessert item kind of new to that. <laughs> like, here's a bun. You can get a dessert bun. It's, you can get one filled with chocolate or one with beans. <laughs> Who's picking beans? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, did you run out of chocolate? You know, it's like, so this one's all chocolate. We're out of chocolate. I don't know. Should we fill it with beans? Will people be angry? And of course, the beans are delicious. It is delicious. Here in Seoul, I got the, uh, the, the pancake kind of uh, bun that's shaped like the poop emoji. That's, that's some Korean technology there. And uh, the poop emoji, and it's filled with chocolate or beans. Again, you know, like the poop emoji pancake filled with beans, so many layers of no. Right? It's like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll go for the poop emoji filled with beans because I just never want to have a girlfriend. I don't know. What is going on? Are you wearing a diaper? What is... Still getting used to the, uh, the Asian concept of space. It's a little different. You know, like if I'm standing here in Asia, everyone's standing like, hey, how you doing? Uh, did, did we date before? Or, uh, can, you, can you put on a condom? Uh, I don't even let my wife stand this close. There's an apparent shortage of napkins in all of Asia. <laughs> there is... There is it's just a cultural difference. You ask for napkins in Asia, and they're like so suspicious. They're like, it's like you ask for their pin code to their credit card or something. What do you need them for? I don't know, wipe my mouth? But that's just the Asians are better at eating. You know, Westerners were just like, oh shoot, missed my mouth again. Whereas Asians are like, ah, I can do it with two sticks better than you. You guys have a fork and you miss still. Still some debate whether a napkin is a tissue in Asia too, right? Have you noticed that? You're like, 
sit down at a restaurant, they give you a box of tissues. I'm like, I don't know, I, I don't have a cold. <laughs> I was in Beijing, sat down in a restaurant, and I looked to the right, there was a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> How bad is the food here? <laughs> you know what, you're gonna need this. You're gonna need it right here at the table. Um, ironically, went in the bathroom, no toilet paper. Different ancient cultures, different strengths, right? You know, the, the, you know Korea and, and Thailand, amazing food. Japanese, Japanese toilet, masterpiece. <laughs> you know, masterpiece. I don't know if I need the heated seat. You know, I don't, you know, you know what's comfortable? Feeling like your butt has the flu. <laughs> I don't know, that's not for me. <laughs> Japanese toilet, masterpiece. Chinese toilet, not there yet. Some places not there at all. <laughs> like there's doing things differently and then just going, we're not gonna have a toilet. Or we're gonna go no toilet. There's, sometimes there's a urinal, but not a toilet. You're like, what, didn't it show up or something? We're still waiting on those toilets, uh, just open up. I did a show in Beijing, the day of the show, got an email, they're like, hey, just wanted to give you a heads up, there's no toilet at the venue. And I was like, well, is this an outdoor show? <laughs> and it was a beautiful theater. It was like this theater, it was a beautiful theater, no toilet. Felt like a design flaw. <laughs> like the architect, they're like, hey, before you open up the theater, I just, oh, I forgot. <laughs> oh, shoot. I know I forgot something. They were very polite at the venue. They're like, if you really have to go, you, there's a hospital nearby. <laughs> Talk about an emergency room. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, you know, the squat toilet. That's what it's called, squat toilet, which is like no toilet. <laughs> it's like even calling it a toilet is dishonest. It's just a hole, <laughs> right? That's where my adventurous, I love cultures stops. <laughs> like the whole toilet, I'm like, I'm out. I'm out, you know what I mean? You know what? And I was like in Beijing and I was like, you know what, I'll wait, I'll wait till I get to Hong Kong, you know? <laughs> I'm just gonna, I don't, first of all, I don't know if I can physically do that. I don't know if I can do that, and I can't do that name, that's for sure. You know what I mean? It was just like, it was too much. And then, you know, but I've encountered that in other travels, in Istanbul, I encountered the whole toilet, and by whole, I don't mean an entire toilet, I mean like, a hole, and there was, in Istanbul, there was the hole, and then there were two huge footprints. I don't know why the footprints were there, maybe to stop people from fishing, I don't know. And, like, I don't know why the footprints were there, you're like, oh wow, this is where Bigfoot went poop, I don't know. It was very confusing, but. I had been to Beijing before, the last time I was in Beijing, uh, there was a smog alert, so everyone was wearing the mask. You know, I was like, wow, a lot of surgeons here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was the mass, you know. You'll see, you'll see mass for different reasons. You know, like in, in different countries, you know, like in China, they wear the mask because there's all the pollution. In Korea, they wear the mask because of the Chinese pollution. <laughs> and uh, in Japan, they wear the mask because they're crazy. <laughs> I, uh, but like, <laughs> there was this, there wasn't, it, there was no smog alert this time, but last time I was there, there was a smog alert and everyone in Beijing was very nice. They're like, sorry about the weather. And I'm like, I don't think it's the weather. I don't think the weather is turning the sun purple. I'm just gonna go out on a limb there. So many different uh, countries have palaces. I went to the palace here in Seoul, it was beautiful. There's different types of palaces, you know, like there's a bunch of them. In Thailand, there's a lot of palaces. In China, though, Beijing, that's like the ultimate palace because it's the forbidden city. It's like that emperor was like, you know what, how about a palace and a city? Like that's like, how do you justify that? You know, like I love my subjects, but I'm gonna need my own city. <laughs> 
something where people can't go in there. I just so I went to the Forbidden City, and then uh, I went across town to the Summer Palace. After the Forbidden City, how do you justify the Summer Palace? <laughs> Was the emperor like, you know, this this Forbidden City is cool, but what about summer? <laughs> and they're like, well, we, you, you have the whole city. We could uh, do something. Yeah, 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 but summer. <laughs> they were like, well, you, would you want us to, we, I guess we could, we could build you another palace. If you want to. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're up for it. Yeah, well, what would you want? You, would you want it on the coast or something? He's like, no, 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 it's just there. <laughs> just put it over there where I could walk to it. <laughs> I'd prefer to walk to my palace. Did a show in uh, Bangkok, went to Thailand. That was amazing. Thailand, fascinating. Got to see a five-year-old riding a motorcycle. <laughs> uh, Thailand, the food, amazing. Like, amazing such variety and so many different types of amazing dishes. But after like a day or two, I was like, hey, you know, how about one last peanut sauce and some infrastructure? How about that? How about we just throw up a couple uh, traffic lights? You know what I mean? Think of it as the pad thai of transportation. Uh, did a show in Singapore, Singapore, Gum's illegal there. Gum's illegal in Singapore. Finally, someone taking a stance on that dangerous gum. <laughs> gum illegal. No, can't do it. Gum, you know, money laundering, tax evasion. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're not chewing gum, you know? You're not gonna chew gum and steal money from poor people, are you? <laughs> Singapore, of course, three unique uh, different types of people together. You know, there's the Malay, there's the Indian, and there's the Chinese people with all the money. And they're all combined together with a common goal of pretending to understand English. <laughs> it was interesting, because, you know, all th I don't expect anyone in Asia to speak English or understand English. But if you don't speak English, you don't have to act like you do. There's different, <laughs> there's different approaches. To, like in Singapore, they would nod like they completely understood what you were saying. And then they would just walk away. <laughs> you're like, but I did that. Korea, different experience, right? In Korea, people will, they, they'd act like it was a stupid question. They're like, I, I don't have time for this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like but you're our tour guide, you know? And, uh, in Japan, people would, they would uh, answer your, they would answer, a, the, they'd give an answer to a different question. You'd be like, uh, what time do you open? They'd be like, three blocks. And I'm so dumb, I'm like, is, is, that, the, is that the answer? Wait a minute, did I ask a different question? Am I still jet lagged? What's going on? Love performing in Asia. Didn't do a show in Mongolia. That's a disappointment. Those Mongolians, they, they really slacked off, right? Such a force for like thousands of years. Such a threat. Those Mongolians are coming. The Mongolians are coming. Build a wall. Build a wall. The Mongolians are coming. Now they're like, you know, we like horses. <laughs> I just, I like to ride horses. That's such a cultural shift. You know, Genghis Khan is coming, he's gonna conquer the world. Now they're like, you know, I want to open a buffet. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm into. I just, such a different generation. <laughs> Doing shows, a lot of audience members, expats in uh, these Asian countries. And expats, I want to thank them for coming out. And uh, of course, I didn't know this, expat is short for weirdo. <laughs> who was kicked out of their normal country uh, for criminal activities and uh, couldn't go to Singapore because they chew gum. All right, thank you so much.
Thank you, Korea. I've had so much fun here. I really appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. I feel like we really connected. I think you're ready to move the relationship to subscribe. If the button wasn't down there, subscribe. Just do it. Do it.